One of the most important functions of your circulatory system is regulation of the blood pressure. It's important that your blood pressure is high enough to get blood to the brain and also to circulate adequate blood out to all of the other tissues in order to deliver oxygen and nutrients and to get rid of wastes. But it's also important that the blood pressure is not too high. High blood pressure strains the heart and it can also damage the blood vessels. Blood pressure regulation is complicated because of the number of factors involved. And we're going to talk about a lot of these different factors that affect blood pressure, although I won't expect you to redraw the figure that's shown. We are going to address almost everything that's on there. We're going to begin by looking at the three main components that affect the blood pressure. That would be the blood volume, the cardiac output, and the total peripheral resistance. We talked about blood volume back in the blood unit. It makes sense that the more blood volume you have, the higher the blood pressure will be. You're pushing more blood into the blood vessels, that creates more pressure. Blood volume is affected by things like um, your level of hydration, and we talked quite a bit before about the osmolarity and the colloid osmotic pressure in the blood and how that affects blood pressure. Your blood volume is also affected by your kidney function. Your kidneys can either retain more water so that you increase the blood volume, or the kidneys can be used to remove more water in the urine to help bring blood volume down. The blood volume also affects the blood pressure through the cardiac output. The more blood volume you have, the more blood goes into the heart. That's the preload. More preload in the heart increases the stroke volume, so there's more blood going back out, and that increases the cardiac output. And cardiac output has a big impact on blood pressure. The more cardiac output you have, meaning the more blood you're pushing into the arteries, the higher the blood pressure in the arteries is going to be. We've already discussed the factors that affect cardiac output. Cardiac output depends on the stroke volume and the heart rate. As we saw before, the heart rate is controlled by the cardiac center in the medulla oblongata, and anything that activates the sympathetic neurons in the cardiac center will increase the heart rate. Um, things like uh, activity or exercise or strong emotions will activate the sympathetic neurons and increase the heart rate. Anything that activates the parasympathetic neurons in the cardiac center will end up decreasing the heart rate. That is going to affect the cardiac output, which affects the blood pressure. The stroke volume depends on how much blood is going into the heart, the preload, as well as the strength of the contraction or the contractility. And so those are the things affecting the stroke volume that affect the cardiac output that affect the blood pressure. So blood volume and cardiac output we've discussed before. The third key factor in blood pressure we haven't talked about before, and that is the total peripheral resistance. The total peripheral resistance is all of the factors that are opposed to the flow of blood, all the things that make it harder for blood to flow through the blood vessels. The higher the total peripheral resistance, the higher the blood pressure. The lower the resistance, the lower the blood pressure. The total peripheral resistance depends on several things, including the condition of the blood vessels. If the inside of the blood vessels are very smooth, then the blood will flow very easily, reducing the resistance and reducing the blood pressure. The more roughened or the more deposits that build up inside the blood vessels, the more resistance there will be and the higher the blood pressure is. Blood viscosity also affects pressure because remember that viscosity is resistance to flow, the higher the viscosity of the blood, the more it resists flow and the higher the blood pressure will be. The less viscous blood will flow more easily and have lower blood pressure. One of the most important factors affecting total peripheral resistance is blood vessel diameter. The diameter of the blood vessel has a big effect. If we dilate the blood vessels, then we have bigger blood vessels, that causes less resistance, and that decreases the blood pressure. If we constrict the blood vessels, that increases the resistance, and that's going to increase the blood pressure. The diameter of the blood vessels is something that can be regulated, and this is where we get a lot of our blood pressure regulation from, is from regulation of the diameter of blood vessels.